this is your guide to button and buttonhole basics. You're the creative genius here, so use this information as you see fit. So let's jump right in, shall we? Your two main buttonhole types are sew through and shank. They both come in a variety of shapes, sizes, mediums and colors. Your sew through buttons are the ones you see most often simply because they're easy to produce and to install. The two hole button is traditionally good for light to medium weight fabrics and at some point in time they were used exclusively in women's tailoring. I'm not 100% sure why that was the case, just like why women's garments button up on the left and men's on the right. There's many interesting speculations, but anyway, the four hole buttons work best for heavyweight fabrics, but of course there are many different sizes to suit your need, whether for practical reasons or aesthetics. The extra holes make the button much more secure, so it can be helpful using these in areas where the garment will have higher amounts of stress. Also, these types of buttons were and still are in most cases used in more traditional men's tailoring. Next up, we have shank buttons. These are called buttons with a hidden hole. The shank style of buttons are actually very versatile and can be bold or minimal. Generally speaking, they are either flat, quarter, half, or full ball. The main reason you don't see these types of buttons more often is because they need to be hand sewn. I'd say it's definitely worth the extra effort. They can be used for any weight fabric, However, using them with heavyweight fabric, like say a coat, you'd want extra stability. And this is where an anchor button would be used. This is also common on single button blazers or other like garments. Now, if you've ever shopped for buttons online, you've probably seen all the different types of measurements. You'll mostly find measurements in millimeters, ling, and in some places, inches. Now, I'm a bit biased on this topic. I prefer the ling or line measurement. It's more precise. For those wondering why line measurements, it's pretty much a length measurement created in France before the metric system was widely adopted there. And fun fact, it's not only still used in button measurements, but also in hat and watchmaking. With all this talk about buttons, how could we not mention their better halves? There are many buttonholes for many different fabric types and uses, but we'll cover the most common types and some tips and tricks to get them just right. Later, I'll show you what happens when you skip a step. First up, we have your standard buttonhole. This can appear as your classic rectangle shaped buttonhole or with rounded ends. These are good for most light to medium weight fabrics uh, with little to no stretch. And that's because there is a stretch buttonhole that's specifically for more stretchy fabrics like knits or even if you were to work with like a bias cut or something like that. Then there's the keyhole. These are usually found on coats, um, jeans, and other heavyweight fabrics. They also play very nicely with shank buttons. And lastly, the hand sewn buttonhole. These are super classic. You can literally do whatever. They add an element of couture and could be the cherry on top for historically accurate or inspired garments. Regardless of the type, you definitely want to make sure that you use some type of stabilizer or interfacing when sewing buttonholes. It'll help prevent warping, stretching, or the unspeakable. <laughs> a button slipping out due to improper buttonholes. Enter in Exhibit A. This was one of my first dresses and I forgot to add interfacing to the placket. You can see how after some wear and washing, the buttonholes aren't really holding their shape, let alone the buttons. So the quick fix to this was to put some snaps in between the buttons that slip the most. One of these days I'll replace the entire placket since I do still have some of this fabric left over and I'll just do it the right way. Which brings me to orientation. You can sew your buttonholes either horizontal or vertical. With the horizontal option, you'll usually see this on dress shirts or shirt dresses, etc. In these types of applications, the buttons are in higher quantity due to the fact that vertical buttonholes aren't as strong. 
Having more buttons closer together reduces the amount of strain on any given button slash buttonhole, which equals a lower probability of having that issue. You'd also want to consider the intended fit of the garment. If it's to be a bit looser fitting, vertical buttonholes will perform nicely. On the other hand, horizontal buttonholes offer a more sturdy connection. They are typically seen on jackets, blazers, coats, uh, waistbands, as these types of garments or the location on a particular garment has higher amounts of strain and movement and horizontal buttonholes can handle that. So let's go over how to actually sew on some buttons by machine and by hand. All right, so I prepared a sample button placket. So one side is gonna have the buttons, the other side is gonna have the buttonholes. I just want to show you on this side, there is some interfacing inside there. So earlier I did have a, a bit of a tension issue um, earlier, so that's why it's the stitching looks kind of funny. This is what it should look like. And so I'm just going to quickly mark out some, mark out the spots that we're going to sew. We're going to do three different buttonholes and three different types of buttons. So I'm just going to mark off here on two, five, and eight. And then we're going to start with this really cute owl shank button. It's fitting for the upcoming season. And so we're going to start by making a knot here in the fabric. I like to do a couple of knots before and do just a couple of stitches just to make a really nice sturdy base for the button. And so now that we've done that a few times, I'm just gonna trim this little extra piece of um, thread. And now that our thread is anchored, we're going to, oops, we're going to put the needle through the button and then which this part's a little tricky, just making sure that the button kind of stays still, but at the same time, you kind of don't need to because once you make that first little pass through on the fabric there, you that pretty much puts the button in place for the most part. So just a little bit closer, um, you're going to pretty much alternate from looping the needle through the fabric and then putting it through the shank. So here I put it through the fabric and you want to pull it kind of taut and then slide it through the shank and then we're gonna loop it back through the fabric and keep on going a few times until we get eh, about six to eight times depending on, you know, depending on the weight of the fabric, I'd say probably about six to 10 passes. All right, now that we're coming to the last um, pass through, I wrap the thread around a few times and then tie a double knot, as you can see here. And then just clip the thread and that's that. Ta-da, it's so cute. And here's the back. Now we're going to move on to putting a four hole button on by machine. So to begin doing this, you'll want to locate where your feed dog lever is. Mine is in the front. Some machines have it in the back, but just make sure that you put your feed dogs down and then you want to put on your button foot. So here's our button. I'm going to do a diamond type design. So I'm going to put the button sideways and then I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. And then the first couple of stitches that you do, I like to use the hand wheel a couple of times just to make sure that the needle clears the holes because you, that's a really good way to break a needle. After that, then you can just go ahead and press the foot down and go over, you know, five to six times. And now we're gonna turn and do the others. And I'm pretty much gonna connect each hole, so you'll see, and it'll kind of look like a little diamond shape once I'm done. All 
All right, now we're just gonna clip the loose strings and here you have it. And there you have it. Now we're gonna move on to sewing a two hole button by hand. So we're gonna start similarly as we did with the shank where we're going to secure the thread into the fabric. So we're just gonna make a knot. And here's our lovely shell two hole button. And just catching a little bit of the fabric in as we go in the first hole. And then we go through the other. And it's pretty straightforward. You just keep going around and around, alternating holes until your desired tightness. Now that we're at the end, I go ahead and wrap the thread around a few times and then make a knot. And then clip the loose thread. And that's it. And now on to the lovely buttonholes. So we wanna go ahead and prepare our machine. So we're gonna take off the button foot and put that away and get out our buttonhole foot. And then we wanna make sure that we put our feed dogs back up. Okay. Now we're ready to go. This back portion of the foot is where you'd put your button. So as you can see, the owl foot is actually too big to fit in the widest setting. So since it's not that much bigger, I'm going to just leave it at its widest setting and make the buttonhole and I'm sure it will be just fine. Generally, the machine sewn buttons are actually a bit too big. Um, a good rule of thumb is that you want the buttonhole to be a little snug the first few uses because that way the buttonhole lasts longer. So it actually kind of works out um, that this is just a little bit too small. So we're going to go ahead and choose the standard buttonhole. And then it's the easy part. You just let the machine do the work. And you'll also want to make sure that you put the little um, button stopper lever thing down. That lets the machine know when to, that lets the machine know the size of the buttonhole it's making. So if you don't put that down, it's going to continue going forever. Some machines have a setting where it'll stop you or it won't even start making the buttonhole unless you have it down. Alrighty, and now that that is all sewn up, we're just gonna use, as a safety precaution, we're gonna put a pin at the very top, just below the top bar tack. Then at the other end, you're gonna use a seam ripper and carefully cut open all the way up until you hit the pin. And that way, putting the pin there stops you from cutting the threads of the buttonhole. And now the moment of truth, let's test out this buttonhole, which it is a little bit snug, but it's perfect. Look, ta-da! All right, so we're gonna take this out so we can go ahead and make our next buttonhole. For the next one, we're gonna do a keyhole button. So as you can see, this button fits just fine. And now we're gonna go ahead and start our next buttonhole. And again, making sure that we have that buttonhole lever down. All right, and quickly, I'm gonna show you how to do the horizontal buttonhole. This is gonna be a bit of a snug fit, and our next button is pretty much the same size as the last. 
So I'm gonna eyeball this a little bit and um, make sure that it fits the placket. So wish me luck, here we go. <laughs> Alrighty, so here's our first one. That's your standard buttonhole. And then here is the one that we just did, the keyhole in the vertical position. And then we did a rounded, a buttonhole with rounded ends horizontally. So eh, it just barely fit. I think it like was off center by about a millimeter, but it's okay. So for this one, I'll show you if you're brave enough, you can cut it with some scissors. You just want to be careful not to cut any of the threads of the buttonhole. But there you have it. And then I'll show you the other method again using the pin at the top. Okay, now that we have all of our buttonholes opened, now we're just going to go ahead and button them up. Obviously, when you're making a garment, you'd want to measure out and make sure that your buttons fit the placket and everything. So, yeah, but for this demonstration purposes, it's okay. I just want you to get an idea. But for a placket this size, you'd probably want to use a button that's a few sizes smaller. Alrighty, and there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you stay tuned for the other sewing and mending basics videos. We'll be putting one out every week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!